10 o'clock and welcome to Lincoln Wear Live. We're here every Sunday morning from 10 until 11. And as always, we've got a great show for you lined up today. The first part of the show, we're going to talk about the Free Store Food Bank. And this is the time of the year that they definitely need your donations. And the second half of the show, we're going to talk about foreclosures, a big event they're having at the Centos Center tomorrow. And we'll give you information on that with Steve Driehaus. He'll be in the studio on the second half of the show. But right now, John Young and Lisa Snorton from the uh, Free Store Food Bank. John and Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. I tell you, uh, <clears throat> this is probably one of the toughest years you've probably had in a long time as far as donations and food for the Free Store Food Bank. We, I saw a big article in the Enquirer. Uh, food pantries are bare. Uh, how, how do you respond to that? Well, that's exactly what's happening. We're having an increased demand, Lincoln, and, and need for uh, families. Uh, we have significant increase over, really, over the last two years. And uh, just this morning's paper, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, gasoline, groceries, weighing on spending plans. Yeah. Retailers are concerned about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, these these are elementary uh, prices in our economy. And uh, when gasoline goes up and groceries go up. Everybody's going to suffer. Right, and, and it, I know uh, probably Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, if you drive past the Free Store Food Bank and over the Rhine, you see a long line of people that's down the street and around the block trying to get food to feed their families over the holidays. That's right, and uh, we hopefully uh, will make that a shorter line because we hope to serve them quicker because, you know, they are our customers, and, yeah. and we, want to get, we want to show them every, uh, every chance that dignity and, and respect that uh, we can give them. So uh, we hope to serve them quickly. So Now, do you, do you ever run out of food, Lisa? I mean, like, uh, on, on, say on Wednesday, uh, do you have to close the doors or early or what? Do you have enough to just feed everybody? We try very hard not to have to shut our doors. But unfortunately, sometimes that does happen. Um, we work very hard with our staff to try to keep the shelf stocked at all times. But the demand is so high at this time mm -hmm. that just the demand to keep the shelf stocked and keep everything going is very hard, especially this time of year. And I know uh, a lot of uh, stores are helping out, Kroger, Biggs, even the Cincinnati Bengals today urging people to bring canned goods down. Oh, please remember to bring the canned goods to the Cincinnati Bengals game. We'll pro provide a, uh, a monetary donation, too. To, uh, we, we need all the help we can get this time of year, Lincoln. And let's talk about that. Uh, uh, if people just can't get together canned goods and they can just make a donation to the free store food bank uh, and, and you don't even have to come to the game to do that but how can they make donations if they don't want to you know donate canned goods well people can connect with us on the uh, on the internet uh, www.freestorefoodbank.org and we have a place right there where they can make a donation they can call us on our uh, on our telephone at uh, 482 food uh, that's 482 FOOD okay. I'll make a uh, donation. Many, many people do that, of course. Now, when you get your donations, do you, uh, do you have contracts with the uh, wholesalers? Do you buy the food wholesale so that you, you, you can stretch the money? Right. That's exactly what we do. And, uh, you know, when, you, when we say stretch the money, uh, we, for every dollar we get, Lincoln, mm -hmm. We get 94 cents out to the people that, okay. that we're serving. And that's good to hear so because a lot of times you make donations, only 10% of what you give goes to the actual people you're donating to and the rest go to administrative costs. No, 94 cents of every dollar goes direct service and uh, we're very proud of that. Uh, and part of that is because of all the, the donors that we mm -hmm. have and, the, and their, their, their uh, strength and also our volunteers. All right, we're going to take a quick break and come back and talk about more of what the Free Store Food Bank is doing for the hungry in the community and what you can do to help out also. The phone number is 513-381-3838. Give us a call if you've got comments, want to make some suggestions, anything, just do that right now. We'll be back in a moment. And we're back live. Lincoln Wear Live is the program. We've got uh, John Young, the president and CEO of the Free Store Food Bank, and we've got uh, Lisa Snorton, and she's with us also. Now, Lisa, what happens? I mean, can anybody just walk up to the Free Store Food Bank and say, give me some food, I want some food? How do you screen people? How do you know who to give it to? Well, we screen people based on income levels. However, um, we also realize that working families also who have incomes also have a need because maybe their utility bill is high. Maybe they have doctor's bills that are high. We have to weigh all the options for 
everyone because anybody at any time can need help. And so we provide that service for you. So yes, you could come up and ask for help if you needed it. Okay, do you pre-screen them or what? what Basically, do you have to... we just talk, we just talk okay. to them and we just try to find out what actually made them come there. Okay. Um, they tell us specifically what it is and then we let them go ahead on down and get okay. food. Because I, I don't, and I don't think anybody would just come down there and get in line for food if they really didn't need it. No. it you know, so I guess really not a whole lot of screening right. would we have to take we, place. We, we, we turn no one yeah. away. Yeah. We are there to help people, period. Now, what will people get between uh, Monday and Wednesday when they come down to the free store food? What will they get in that bag of groceries? Uh, things that you can use to make Thanksgiving dinner, turkeys, um, stuffing, macaroni and cheese boxes, just things that you can use to make a good Thanksgiving dinner. Now, after the holiday season is over, and you know everybody's you know done with the Thanksgiving, the Christmas, and then how do you operate? Do people just come in on a daily basis? How does that work? That's exactly the way it works. And you know, uh, you bring up a good point here, Lincoln, because hunger has no holiday in this community. And we have uh, 365 days a year we're open, and uh, and the the food pantries and soup kitchens that we serve are open to uh, support people in uh, in really very very critical needs in our community for uh, f uh, for uh, their need for food. I will say that the half of the people that we serve this next uh, three days of, uh, th for the Thanksgiving holiday will be children. Okay. Uh, yeah, and, and that's the biggest growth population, mm -hmm. biggest growth area in the, in the population of poverty in this community is children. Uh, we can't let that happen. Right, it's right. unacceptable. All right, uh, taking your donations, and uh, they'll put the phone number and the website up on the screen. Let's go to the telephones. Let's talk to uh, Gigi. Gigi, good morning. You're on Lincoln. We're live. How are you? I'm fine. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to say that um, I was happy about the good things that the Barrett's program at the free store is doing for people. And if you could kind of touch base on what the Barrett's program is and maybe kind of mention what their rate of success is for people that are applying for uh, Social Security Disability. Okay, I'll uh, hang up and listen to the answers. Thanks for your call. Thanks for the question, Gigi. The Barris program basically helps women who are uh, in the welfare system uh, obtain uh, Social Security disability. These are women who are not likely to be able to work, even though the expectation of the welfare system is that they do so. They are uh, people who are disabled and who have not had the wherewithal to find, uh, find help. We have found Almost 50% of the women that we've served have been able to, to uh, obtain disability because of the, of the work on the Barris program. And uh, many of those women otherwise would be uh, trying to make it the best they could without, without an income stream. So we're very proud of that, and thanks for the question. And what was the other question? She had another question. Do you remember that other one? Uh, it was about Barris, I think. I think and, okay, uh, that was both uh, of them. And okay, about the success. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we've got Bobby coming up. Bobby, uh, good morning. You're on Lincoln Ware Live. How are you? Bobby. Okay, Bobby is listening to the TV. Good morning, Mr. Ware. Okay, turn your TV down, Bobby. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Ware. Turn your TV down. It is down. down. Okay, now, go ahead. Okay, I got a question. Yes. Uh, okay, I got a question for you. I got two questions. Okay. How many people from one home can get help? And are they giving ham or turkey away, or what are they giving away? Because I don't want no uh, little chicken. I want a turkey. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Thanks for your call. All uh, right, son. It's how many people in a family? Can, yeah, how many per family can be helped? We help. Heard the requirements, but how many in the family can be helped? Okay. From one household. Okay. And, and are they giving turkeys or chickens away, or do they not know? All right. Thanks for your call. The uh, the 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 number of people in the family uh, it depends on the size of the family, the size of the box of food they get. Uh, a family of one or two isn't going to get as much as a family of four or five. Mm -hmm. So uh, we help families up to uh, five or six, and you know, and, and households, and we'll work with people yeah. when they come down. We okay. want to know, we want them to have a good holiday meal like you and I do, and 
and uh, also some leftovers. Right. Like she wanted variety. to know if you're giving away turkeys, ham, or chicken, or what? We're giving away all the above. Oh, okay. and, uh, and, and it just depends on what we have, to be honest with you. We work hard. And, 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 and if you're hungry, uh, does it really matter if it's turkey, ham, or chicken? Well, that's what I think, Lincoln. <laughs> I, uh, we're trying to uh, try our best and work with our donors uh, yeah. the best we can <laughs> right. to get the best we can out for the people right. we're serving. All right. Let's go to Mary. Mary, good morning. You're on Lincoln. Good we're live. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Do I look you, good you enough look for you today? So well, I, I know I dress just for you, Mary. <laughs> just a, for you. Is that a pinstripe suit? Yes, Mary. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm so glad you're looking handsome every week. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that most of the people that I know be in the line, they're not needy. They just love to beg, and that's so sad because some do need, but there are so many that just take advantage of it. So I think it's so nice that you have that, but well, I Mary, think it's so unfair. I don't know if you've ever seen the people standing in line down there. If you would look at them, I don't think you would think they were just down there because they didn't need to be. Yes, uh, I, 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 I plan on, you know, I would wish we could show a video of the people standing in line. I see it every, I see it every year. Yeah, and I don't think people would be in line unless they had oh, to. Oh, yes, you don't know people. They're in the snow, the rain, and all, begging. Oh. So you have a good day, and I know a lot of them. You take care. All right, Bye-bye. Mary. Thanks for your call. Yeah, and, and once again, I just don't think people would get in that line and stand there if they didn't have to be. I hear that comment periodically, Lincoln, and what I ask people to do and invite people to do, and I'd invite Mary to spend a day with me at the free store. Mm -hmm, I'd, mm -hmm. I'd like to like her to talk like I do and like Lisa does with the people that we serve. Yeah, yeah. And I think she'll come away with a radically different viewpoint of that. All right. Uh, let's move along. 513-381-3838. We're talking about the free store food bank. Once again, give the uh, website address and the phone number where people can make a donation. www.freestorefoodbank.org is the website uh, and the uh, the uh, telephone line is 482 food that's a 513 area code 482 food all right let's take a quick break and we'll come back with more from the free store food bank 513-381-3838 we'll take a quick break and we'll come right back to lincoln Ware live right here on it's 38 back in a moment And we're back live. Lincoln Wear Live is the program. You know the holiday season coming up, and uh, people are hungry. People need to eat. Uh, children, like you said, you feed a lot of children. Uh, what's it like? Do the parents bring their kids down when they get food? What's that like? Um, yes. Um, a specific incident that just happened maybe a couple of days ago, a parent brought in her child, and the child was just profusely crying, crying, crying. And it was alarming, and I went over to the child and wondered why I was crying. And we have snacks and things that we have around in the free store, and I went over and gave the child a snack, and the child stopped crying. We see, I see every day the face of hunger in children, and it's, you would be very shocked to see that and it's it's sad and I just you know I want people to know that those are the type of people that we're helping. Now what, what about infants, uh, newborns? Do you have formula and yes, stuff like that for newborns? Yes, we have formula, we have diapers and we give that out every day as much as we have it on mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, it's so important for you to make your donations to the Free Store Food Bank, especially if you're going to the Bengals games, game today, take your canned goods down, there'll be barrels set up around the stadium as you're coming in you can just drop your canned goods in the barrels and uh, they will uh, appreciate that let's go back to the telephones uh kay good morning how are you pretty good and you what can i help you with i have a question does the free store still need any volunteers yes we always have a need for volunteers uh, and if they dial 482 food, they can speak with someone and they can give them the uh, information about volunteer opportunities. If not, you can come down to 112 East Liberty and we can give you a volunteer application that you can fill out and get you directly connected to our volunteer coordinator. Okay. Do you have your quota for this holiday? Um, I'm not for sure about that. I know that we always have volunteer opportunities. People always a lot want to volunteer during Christmas and Thanksgiving, but on an everyday basis, we 
desperately need volunteers. Volunteer help us keep our shelves stocked. Volunteers help us with every entity of the free store. So don't just think about now, but think about volunteering on a regular basis all the time. That would be That's greatly fine. appreciated. What number do I need to dial? Um, you can dial 241-1064 and uh, ask to speak with our volunteer coordinator. Uh, you can come down to 112 East Liberty and ask for a volunteer application, and we can get you connected to our volunteer coordinator. All righty, well, thank you very much. Thank okay, you. that number, 241-1064. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's uh, go to Joyce. Joyce, good morning. You're on Lincoln Wear Live. How are you? Uh, good morning, sir. How's everything, Joyce? It's fine. I came out of the closet. I, I see. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, Mr. Young, uh, if you're unable to actually make a, a physical donation with, um, you know, canned goods, where can you send um, your check to? Do you accept check? Yes, ma'am. We uh, You can send it to the Free Store Food Bank at 1250 Tennessee Avenue. That's 1250 1250 Tennessee Avenue in Cincinnati at 452. Two nine. Do you do you direct it to anybody's attention? Uh, you can send it to to my attention would be great, and I'll make sure it gets to our development department. Can I say hi? Absolutely. You know what, John? I worked with you years and years and years ago when you worked for Man to Man, and I worked for Young Life. Oh, really? Well, it's nice to hear you hear your voice again. <laughs> do you remember? I do remember, and uh, out in. And you were interested in soccer as well. Yeah, absolutely. Out in out in uh, College Hill. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, Joyce. Thanks for your call. All righty. Thank All you, right. Joyce. Okay, bringing back some old memories. Yes. There. All right. Let's go to Greg. Greg. Good morning. What's your question? Uh, how's it going, Lincoln? Pretty good. Um, first of all, I try to catch a show every Sunday. Well, that's good. Um, got a couple comments. Uh, the first thing, um, I think that the free store does great work. And this is a very good time of season to facilitate, talk about it, and keep that mindful when the listeners um, thought that the free store does need food. And this is a great way to get that out there. My second comment is on the lady, Mary, who called in about people coming down to the free store and getting food when they really didn't need it and being greedy as such. Um, I volunteer at churches, and people really, you know, you really have to kind of, not have an ego and you know people aren't down there if they don't need this food um it's very humbling and those people down there it's, it's really a need for it and that it was a little offensive to hear that because you can't judge you know maybe a, a handful of people's actions who may do that as opposed to the people who are really hungry yeah so, mary, you know, mary like, is living in a different mind. planet mary's not living on this planet so yeah you have she, to she, sort of clearly forgive. she's not living on this planet <laughs> Um, it was just a little offensive to me, and yeah. I just, I think the free store does great work, and God bless you. Well, Thanks, thank you. Thanks for your call. All right, let's move along. Uh, we've got, oh, I don't know who else we have, but there's somebody else there. Okay, let's go to Ann. Ann, how are you? Ann. Michael. Michael. Michael, how you doing? Okay, how you doing? Good. Okay, I just wanted to call because it's my first time uh, watching this show. It seems like a good show for the first Cincinnati time. Area. Where have you been? Where have you been? Oh, I'm from Texas. And, oh, um, Texas. Okay. And I think it's a lovely thing what y'all doing. But I have seen someone uh, try to even sell me a turkey after getting one of these things. So I can understand really? what Mary was talking about. Okay. Okay. So I'm just glad that y'all doing a good thing. And where can I get a turkey? Well, do you need one? I mean, are you, are you starving? Well, there are some people on the street that don't uh, really get to get to your area, so I do like to help and um, feed some other people. Yeah. Well, I know the uh, uh, fire department, the uh, black firefighters, they normally give out turkeys every year. And a lot of organizations, uh, they call us wondering where do we know people they can give turkeys to. So listen to my radio show, 1230 The Buzz, uh, Monday and Tuesday, and you'll probably hear something uh, where someone's giving away turkeys. Yeah, okay, because there are some people that don't get to get to the yeah. line that really, uh, that like, just hang out and sleep on the street that would like to get a meal, too. Yeah. All right, thanks for your call. Okay, thank you. All right, and like she said, you're going to have that 1% that's going to try to get a turkey from you and then take it around the corner and sell it to somebody. You're going to get that, but uh, 
normally, uh, if a person stands in line for a couple of hours, they're hungry, they need the food, they're not selling it to anybody, they're taking it home to cook. That's exactly right, and uh, as I told you during the break, I always tell people that we could reduce that 1% to nothing if we, if we built rules this tall and uh, try to enforce the rules. We spend 60% of our time and effort and money working on those rules instead of on the people we're serving. Right. And uh, we, we prefer to think that the people mm -hmm. we're serving are more important than those bunch definitely, of rules. Definitely. So uh, that's, that's uh, another way we think about that. Uh, it's not that I think that never happens, but, but it happens so seldom. Yeah, when you get all these rules, it just makes it, uh, right. you, you like the government. Right. <laughs> you know, like yeah, that's right. The federal you, government. <laughs> you would call us the government, then it wouldn't like us either. So, uh, yes. All right, let's go to Carol. Carol, real quick, how are you? Hi. How you doing? Okay, I got a quick question for you. Number one, I'm going to help and you know help out this year too. Um, what happens with all these restaurants that throw their food out? They don't. They can't donate it. Okay, I'm sure there's some. I know they have a, a some type of deal they work out with the drop-in center and places like that. But I'm not sure uh, the free store is set up to take restaurant food and things like that, are you? We do have a relationship with some restaurants. It has to be in, in fairly large quantities. Uh, some of the, the restaurants that have smaller quantities work out relationships with uh, some of the other agencies we serve, like the free store or soup kitchens and so on. So, I know yeah. places like, I'm going to say like the Golden Corral. i got friends that work there. i got friends that work at KFC. And they tell me at the end of the night, they just throw that stuff away. And to me, instead of just throwing it away, they can't donate it. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, about any specific restaurant, Carol, but uh, we, uh, there are relationships all over town where some restaurants are able to connect with uh, us and others who, uh, who can use that kind of uh, product. Okay, well, I will, be, I will be helping out this year. Thank all right. you so much. Hey, okay. thank, thanks for your call. Appreciate it. Got time for maybe one more, maybe two more quick calls. Rose. Hello. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, and hello to your guests. How do you do? Uh, I wanted to make a statement. I, I'm on Mary's side, and the reason I'm on Mary's side is because my husband and I were driving down Liberty Street one day, and we saw these two girls coming down Liberty Street in a, with a little red wagon, and they had like two bags um, of groceries in it, and they had been to the free store, and the other one had uh, a bag, and um, we stopped to talk to a friend. And when they got down farther, you know, we were just sitting there, and here they come. And they start asking people if they wanted to buy things that they got from the free store. We were even asked if we wanted to buy something. And we had just saw those people up at the free store, and here they come down selling the stuff, wanting to sell the stuff that they got from the free store. Well, like I say, you're going to get that 1% of hustlers I don't care what you do, right. you know. I mean, uh, I don't care what you do to somebody that's going to try to run a hustle on you. And you just, I mean, that's just the way life is, I guess, you know. Well, again, some, uh, Rose, I'd invite you to come down and spend a little time with me if you, if you like. I'd be glad to help you. Uh, and you can help me understand that maybe. But, but between the two of us, l let's spend a little time with the people we serve. And let's sit down and talk with them. And I think, I think it will change your mind. All right, let's uh, final call here, Trish. Trish, how are you? Hello, hi, good morning. Morning. Hi, yes, I was responding also about that 1%. Um, I understand that people do go down and stand in that line, and there are people that are in need, and there are people turning right around and selling the groceries. But you also need to understand that maybe these people who are selling the groceries to maybe finish out their Thanksgiving meal. You know, most of the stuff that is donated to the free store, uh, some people already have in their kitchen cabinets. So where it is a blessing to them, it's not really uh, so much of an asset to them. So, I mean, those that are going out and doing negative stuff with the money that they produce off the groceries, that's a total big difference. But those that need it and are definitely in need, then it ends up being a blessing for them. Okay, I, I hear what you're saying, and uh, you, you could be right. You never know. But uh, the main thing, let's not concentrate on the 1%. Let's com concentrate on the 99% that need the help, okay. and we need your donations for the Free Store Food Bank. Once again, before we let you go, give the phone number and web address, either one of them. 482 Four, Food is the phone number, 482 F O O D. The website is uh, www.freestorefoodbank.org. 
And thank you, Lincoln. All right, and if they want to mail a check in like Joyce, uh, what's the address? 1250 Tennessee Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45229. And it's almost better if they get mail cash donations in or, or check in. Right. You can buy the food. You, it's, it's better for you to buy the food than for people to donate. Well, we have got, great buying power because yeah. we buy a lot of right, food. Right, right. So, you uh, can stretch the dollar right, a lot further it than the, far. Yeah. All right. Thank you, too, for joining thank me this you. morning. Thank you, Lincoln. Lisa and John. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back. Steve Driehaus. State Representative Steve Driehaus will talk to us about the big foreclosure seminar, foreclosure event that's taking place tomorrow at the Centos Center. We'll take a quick break and we'll come right back to Lincoln Wear Live right after these important messages. And we're back live. Lincoln, we're live as a program. And the second half of the show, Steve Driehaus, State Representative Steve Driehaus. And uh, welcome to the show, Steve. Thanks, Lincoln. Great to be here. A uh, uh, big event happening tomorrow at the Centos Center. Uh, uh, Governor Ted Strickland is just, uh, he's putting a hammer down on these mortgage companies with this foreclosure rate and uh, this whole deal. And he's trying to help people out who are in foreclosure. Well, absolutely. And actually, uh, tomorrow from 2 to 8 at the Centos Center, uh, a lot of the servicers of the loans, as well as you know, some of the, the financial institutions themselves, are going to be there, and, and they're doing this voluntarily, to their mm -hmm. credit. Um, and and what, what we have encouraged them to do is sit down with folks who have loans that might be moving toward foreclosure, mm -hmm. folks that might have difficulty making those payments, especially adjustable rate mortgages, especially subprime mortgages, um, and sit down and renegotiate the yeah. terms of those loans yeah. and, and help people get on a payment plan that makes sense. And uh, uh, this is happening tomorrow at the Cintas Center? At the Cintas Center at Xavier University, the, the Schiff Family Conference Center, uh, from 2 to 8 o'clock. You know, we're making this six hours long so that people have plenty of time, uh, be it in the afternoon or after work, you know, if they work until five or six, they can still get there. And even if they're- If they're in the second shift and you go in at three or four- That's right. Then you can still stop by early. Right, and even if their lender hasn't contacted them about being there, we will still have plenty of other groups there mm -hmm. who can help you know, in terms of mortgage counseling. And so that's the whole idea that if anybody out there sees themselves having trouble paying those mortgages, mm -hmm. Please come to the Centos Center. This is a legitimate thing. You know, it's sponsored by the Ohio Department of Commerce. And, you know, we've talked about, you know, you get those guys in the neighborhood passing stuff out on the doors. You get those phone calls at home. We can help you get out of debt. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it's the same yeah. folks that got you into right, debt. Right, 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 right. So, so, so beware of those people right. that come to your door. Now, uh, what about if a person, uh, maybe they, they can see that there's trouble ahead for them. They're not mm -hmm. in trouble yet, but they just know that there's going to be trouble ahead. Uh, That's, with, that's exactly the type of person that we want to talk to because oftentimes, you know, if, you're, if foreclosure processes have already been initiated, you know, it's sometimes difficult to, to get the lender to sit down and renegotiate those terms. Although, quite frankly, so many of them are now coming to the table because they can't get any money for the properties right. in sheriff sale. There's so many houses that are being foreclosed on that they can't get the money right, at right. sheriff sale, so, so they go ahead be, and they renegotiate. And it will be beneficial for them to renegotiate at a lower rate, a fixed rate, and let the people stay in the house and move on. Yeah, and and you know if, if you know I'd be happy to talk to you about you know who this is impacting and why adjustable rate mortgages have taken hold and you know these prepayment penalties that they attach to them so that you can't get out mm -hmm. and because it, it really is predatory and we passed some legislation in the state of Ohio that went into effect earlier this year, but you know it's it's not nearly enough. And, and so this is another effort, you know, by the governor, you know, to really reach out to, to both lenders as well as borrowers. And this is going on, I mean, all across the country. Every day, you can't turn on your TV set and watch the news or open up a newspaper to see that uh, how the foreclosure rate is affecting the economy around the country. Well, it, it, the, the principles of lending have just shifted dramatically. And, and, and what's happened is it's gone from, you know, you going to the local bank or local savings and loan, and then they held the mortgage. Right. It was part of their investment. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens now is that they immediately sell that mm -hmm. onto a secondary, secondary market. It's bundled with thousands of other mortgages. And then investors around the world are buying these mortgage-backed securities. So the risk has been shifted to those investors. But when the risk is shifted, then it's all about the profit made at right. closing. And that changes the dynamics of the mortgage industry dramatically <clears throat> because those banks and savings and loans no longer, you know, are assuming the risk. So you get all these mortgage lenders and out-of-state lenders who, you know, who want to make the money at closing, 
but then transfer the risk immediately into these bundled loans. Wow, wow, and it's just a mess out there. And, uh, and some of the mortgage companies haven't responded, and the governor, he, he sort of ticked off. Oh, absolutely, and, and let me make a distinction. Uh, that the mortgage industry and, and financial institutions are regulated in two different ways. Most of them are federally regulated, mm -hmm. but we do have state-chartered financial institutions, like Fifth Third Bank, mm -hmm. for example, is a state-chartered financial institution. Most of these problems are not with our state-chartered institutions. Okay. They're with the federally okay. regulated institutions. And yeah, we, we have asked voluntarily for them to come to the table. And the folks that are doing it will be there mm -hmm. you know, tomorrow. Okay. But there are an awful lot of other folks who have said, no thanks, no, no we, thanks. we don't want any part of this. And I think oh, the state of Ohio, uh, mm -hmm. uh, some other states sued AmeriQuest and some other mortgage companies, and they won the lawsuit. And Well, fortunately, we now have an attorney general in Mark Dan who uh, takes this issue very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. And he is aggressively pursuing uh, suits against some of these long, you know, larger mortgage mm -hmm. entities that have so many of these subprime loans. All right, 513-381-3838. Uh, if you have a question, if you think maybe you're headed in that direction and you need help, uh, you need to make that seminar tomorrow. You need to, uh, what's it called? It's called the uh, foreclosure. It's borrower outreach. Borrower outreach. Someone, uh, being, and sponsored by the Department of Commerce, the Ohio Department of Commerce. Okay. And we're going to have an awful lot of folks there to help people out. All right. And that's tomorrow. Centos Center, it starts at 2. It goes till 8. 8 o'clock. And mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the radio station will be there. And uh, there will just be all types of help for people to get if they come out there tomorrow. We, we've had these around the state and we've had hundreds of people show up uh, in Cleveland and Dayton and other areas. Really? So yeah, really? it's, uh, it's really beneficial. So if you had hundreds of people show up there and I think Hamilton County leads the state in foreclosures, so... Uh, it's certainly one of the biggest. Yeah. So yeah, so. it's the epicenter. Boy, I tell you. And why is it that it's Hamilton County is one of the biggest uh, in foreclosures. Why is that? Well, you know, it's the, and Cleveland actually has a larger number. I think our rate might be higher than Cleveland. And what it is, it's it tends to be in older, well-established neighborhoods where housing mm -hmm. prices are very affordable, and you have houses available, and it allowed so many of these investors mm -hmm. who really didn't have the interest of the neighborhood in mind, who didn't have the interest of the families at heart. They were just trying to make a buck, and you go into these very affordable neighborhoods and they started purchasing these yeah. properties you know and and that's where we're seeing it most but now you know it's getting so much more attention because now you're seeing foreclosures right. in, in wealthier suburbs right and even in Indian Hill right. places like that <laughs> the, so it's going across the board but but we were seeing this five years ago in in Price Hill Fairmount mm -hmm. uh, South Cumminsville Northside you know the areas that I represent right. and that's why we've been working so hard on this for the last five to six years it's only now that it's hitting Wall Street that you know, folks in, well, take in Washington yeah. and New York yeah. are saying, oh, well, wait a minute, now let's we've take got a look ourselves at a problem. Yeah. All right, let's take a quick break and we'll come back. 513-381-3838. If you've got questions, we've got the answers for you right here on Lincoln Wear Live. We'll take a quick break and we'll return. Steve Driehaus in a minute. And we're back live. Lincoln Wear Live is the program. State Representative Steve Driehaus is on the air with me. We're talking about the uh, foreclosure uh, uh, rate here in Hamilton County and the state of Ohio. And uh, Governor Ted Strick Strickland is doing something about it. And tomorrow at the Centos Center, they're having a big event over there. Yeah, the Borrower Outreach Program from 2 to 8 o'clock at the Centos Center at Xavier University. If you're having any problems with loans, uh, please come. There, there will be help in terms of mortgage counseling, and we're going to have an awful lot of lenders and servicers of mortgages there. Now, uh, when you say some of these mortgage companies may renegotiate with uh, the borrowers, are they putting them into a lower fixed rate? Well, that's the idea. We're trying to get people out of uh, risky adjustable rate mortgages. And, and quite frankly, sometimes adjustable rate mortgages are good for people. If it's affordable and you don't intend to be in your home very long, mm -hmm. maybe an adjustable yeah. rate mortgage is the right deal. But you have to be really careful about adjustable rate mortgages because what we found in the subprime market, and the subprime market is mainly those folks with poor credit history, they get locked into these adjustable rate mortgages with pretty high interest rates. And then there's a prepayment penalty, mm -hmm. and that's the kicker. It's the prepayment penalty of maybe $1,000 or $2,000. So that if you want to readjust, if you want to renegotiate the terms of the loan and refinance, 
you can't do it because you can't afford the prepayment penalty, so you're stuck. And once that adjustable rate mortgage starts adjusting, then oftentimes it can adjust every six months or so. And, and nationwide, we're expecting over a trillion dollars in, re, in, in those loans adjusting in the next three to five years. And a lot of them are adjusting right now and next year in the state of Ohio. And that's why we're so concerned, because we haven't reached the top in terms of the foreclosures. We haven't reached the apex, and, and we're concerned that you know, there's more to come. So we want to prevent this from happening and help people get into those long-term mm -hmm. fixed-rate mortgages that they At can a afford, rate. Yeah. and they know what they're going to be paying every month. Now, okay, the, 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 do the mortgage companies lose money when they you know, take these people from an uh, 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 adjustable mortgage rate to a fixed rate? Who's, who's losing in this? Well, it, relative to... What? And, and it used to be that, yeah, they were losing money, and that's why they wouldn't renegotiate, because mm -hmm. they could foreclose, they mm -hmm. could take the property to sheriff sale, and they could get a decent amount of mm -hmm. money for the mm -hmm. property. Now they can't. Now they can't do that. There's mm -hmm. so many properties out there at sheriff sale that they can't sell mm -hmm. the things at sheriff sale for right. what they need. So they'll order. lose money either way. Right. So it makes sense. So why not sense. keep the people in there, and then you're still getting money. Uh, you know, you still have, you, they're in the house, they're paying the mortgage, and... It's a win-win situation. Right. I guess. It makes a lot more sense to renegotiate the terms of the loan than it does to, to take a shot at sheriff sale if you have too many properties out there. All right, let's go to Marie. Marie, how are you? Fine. Good morning, Lincoln. Morning. Good morning to your guests. Good morning. Um, I'd like to find out if there's any help for a person who's already gone through this. Um, a friend of mine had never lower than a 7.4-something credit scores. Um, he financed with an adjustable rate because he did. He was planning on fixing the house up and mm -hmm. moving quickly, you know. And they hit him with from four hundred something a month to over a thousand dollars a month on an adjustable mortgage. He's lost everything. Is there any help for someone like that? Well, well, have they had the sheriff's sale? Is the house gone? The house is gone. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, obviously that individual has already gone through it, and he, they're in pretty tough financial times. What I would suggest, Marie, is if, if that individual's uh, willing and, and able to come tomorrow, we are going to have a lot of people to help people just clean up their credit histories, to help, you know, put together financial plans that make sense for them. You know, oftentimes people that have been through this or people that are going into it, uh, need help in areas outside of you know paying their mortgage but it's really about budgeting it's about putting together a financial plan and we will have financial counselors there that can work with people you know toward that end and it's really about cleaning up your credit history you know and and getting yourself on the right track to be able to afford to purchase a home again if that's right for you well he had to file bankruptcy well, like i know two of them that did you know and well have him show up there anyway and uh uh, see if he can get some help with this, you know, credit uh, score and see if they can tell him some ways to bring that up. Okay, thank you. Thanks for Thanks. your call. Appreciate it. Let's go to Ward. Ward, how are you? Uh, good morning, Lincoln, and good morning to your guests. Good morning. Y yes, uh, I was just uh, thinking, uh, I have a one, one thing I want to ask Lincoln was that uh, you said that uh, Mary Quest had got sued. Is that case over and closed? And number two, with, the, with all of this uh, foreclosure, is that a, and the gas prices being high as for a commute back out in the suburbs? Is that another way to get the urban areas back and move the lesser poor people out in the suburbs? And that's all I have. Thanks. Thanks for your call. Well, um, uh, the, the Attorney General in the state of Ohio, Mark Dan, has just initiated the cases that, that he's pursuing, and, and I don't know all the financial institutions he's going after. I did read in the paper that the, <clears throat> it was settled with AmeriQuest and uh, people who, were, who fell under, I, I think there were some dates they gave mm -hmm. out, and if you fall under those dates, if you got a loan during those, uh, those years, I forgot the spread, then you would be contacted and they would by, tell you how much money you would get. Right, by AmeriQuest. But, yeah. but they're, I mean, that's just one of the many yeah. players out there. There's, you know, ABN Ambrose, there's Deutsche Bank, there's, there's a bunch of different players uh, mm -hmm. out there. And, and so 
the Attorney General is going to be looking pretty aggressively at going after these folks. Uh, in terms of the, the other part of the question and the higher gas prices and, you know, higher health insurance costs, are you going to see people moving back into the cities? Well, you know, the hope is that one, you know, the, the challenge that a lot of these older neighborhoods have is recovering mm -hmm. from foreclosures, and that's part of our foreclosure task force report, is that they need capital to mm -hmm. do that. Um, so we need to make a product you know, in the cities or rehab, you know, the houses in right, the cities right. to make it a product that's attractive to people. Because quite frankly, you've got an awful lot of people living out in suburban homes, newer homes, and they, they can't afford it. They've got to downsize. And, and oftentimes, you know, neighborhoods uh, in the cities mm -hmm. uh, tend to be more affordable, and, and that may be a viable option. So that's what we're looking at. All right. 513-381-3838. Uh, uh, let's go to... <laughs> <laughs> Ted, okay. Ted, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Pretty good. Hey, listen, I just had a quick comment. I hear a lot of people uh, talking about the uh, mortgage industry and um, things that have happened uh, with the foreclosures. I just wanted to say we are concerned about uh, the rate, and I hear a lot of people saying rate, 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 and we're telling customers, oh, you know, you have a, an adjustable rate and your rate's the problem, and it's not really the rate, and we paint mm -hmm. a picture um, of customers when they go in to, re, to refinance or get financing that they're so concerned about the rate that they're not looking at um, their overall finances. A lot of the times, you know, they did have an adjustable rate and their rate went up, but because of their other financial situations, bad uh, spending habits caused them to not afford the adjusting uh, uh, payment that, that went up. So now they're in a whole totally situation and we're blaming everything on the rate of the loan when in fact the matter is the rate of the particular loan uh, really has a little bit bearing on the overall product uh, that you're getting. You got a you got a six percent uh, interest rate that's spread out over thirty, forty years, sometimes fifty years. So it's it's you know a, a lot of times it's it's the way the loan is is uh, constructed and their spending habits. We need to teach them how to learn how to do more spending control. All right. Well, the That's rate. A good point. Thanks for your call. The rate is and isn't important. In, in some cases, it, it's not just you know the rate. We are talking about points being added at closing. We're talking about those prepayment penalties. In some of these, you know, illegal you know efforts, we you know a big problem has been the artificially high appraisals of the loans. That the amount of the loan is actually too high. Sometimes we see insurance tacked on to these loans that shouldn't be there. And so it's all the costs of the loan in addition to the rate. But with the adjustable rate mortgages. Rate is important because, you know, these adjustable rate mortgages are usually about three years long. And after that three-year period, that rate starts increasing rather rapidly. Say if you go in paying 1200 a month and you, you can handle 1200 Well, then you're and wealthier then, than I am. And, well, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying anybody. And then you look around and it's up to 1800 you know. Well, uh, an important point was made. Um, during the, the foreclosure task force hearings, and, and that was this. It's, you know, oftentimes these people are stretching mm -hmm. to make the initial payment mm -hmm. on the adjustable rate mm -hmm. loan. Mm -hmm. and, and they are trying to clean up, you know, their credit histories and their spending habits, but oftentimes it's a stretch to get them into that loan and make that first payment. Well, if it's a stretch to make the first payment, when that loan readjusts, yeah, it's going to be a real stretch yeah, yeah, to make it over. then. But, but it is about financial counseling and financial mm -hmm. planning, and that's why we're focusing on that too mm -hmm. tomorrow, that it, it's not just about your mortgage payment, but it's about your shopping bill. It's about you know, all your entertainment. It's about all these things and managing your money wisely. So, so that is an important element, and, and Ted's right, that you know, we do have to look at all of those things. All right, I think we have time for maybe one more quick call. Let's go to Jerome. Jerome. Jerome, people, you got to keep your TVs turned down when you're on hold to go on the air. Jerome. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I hear you. I'm here. You're right. We hear the phone there. Maybe, maybe it's not Jerome. It's a... Hello. Yeah, oh. go ahead. <laughs> He's gone. Okay. But that's going to pretty much wrap it up for time anyway. But once again, let's go over uh, what's going on at the Centa Center tomorrow. Centa Center, Xavier University tomorrow uh, from 2 p.m. Uh, to 8 p.m. Uh, we're encouraging anyone that has a loan that they might be running into trouble with, that they might have difficulty making payments on, to please come down. 
talk to some of the mortgage counselors, talk to the financial institutions and the servicers of those loans who are going to be there, sponsored by the Ohio Department of Commerce, sponsored by the governor and the state treasurer. Uh, these are folks that are really trying to prevent foreclosures. We're trying to prevent those abandoned properties. All right, uh, Steve Driehaus, it's always good to see you, and uh, good luck on that tomorrow, and uh, uh, we hope we can help some people. Thanks. Thanks right. for having us, Lincoln. Appreciate it. Let's take a quick break, and we'll come back and wrap things up with the Talk of the Town right here on Lincoln Wear Live on It's 38. We'll take a quick break, and we'll come right back and give you the program rundown for this afternoon. And we're back live, Lincoln, where live is the program. And uh, coming up at noon today, The Serpent's Kiss, starring uh, Ewan McGregor. And uh, that's at noon today, The Serpent's Kiss. And if you want to see a rebroadcast of this show, uh, I know you want to tell all your friends, hey, you got to watch Lincoln Ware's show. Well, it'll be on again tonight at 8 o'clock on Channel 25, W-O-T-H, at 8 o'clock. And then following the rebroadcast of this show at 8 o'clock, Guess what? Uh, at 9 o'clock, Classic Soul Train. And on with Don Cornelius tonight will be the Pointer Sisters and the BT Express. Oh, yeah. Some of my, I used to play those groups when they were new back in the 70s on the radio. I love to watch Classic Soul Train, Don Cornelius with his big afro and it, it, some of the styles they were wearing back then. You have to check it out. Following this show tonight at 9 o'clock on uh, Classic Soul Train on WOTH Channel 25. And if you want to see some of the previous episodes of this show, just log on to WBQC.com, and you can download uh, any of the uh, other episodes I've had throughout the years. I don't know how far they go back, but you can get some of the uh, past shows on the Internet by logging on to WBQC.com. Uh, don't forget to check me out Monday through Friday on 1230, The Buzz of Cincinnati. I'm on from 10 a.m. to 1 and uh, you can call in and talk about some of the different topics that we talk about on a daily basis on 12:30, the buzz of Cincinnati. And if you want to call me, uh, you can call me at um, 679-6028. Leave a message, and I'll try to get back with you if you have a, a, a suggestion or a complaint or if you need some type of uh, a direction. Uh, we can try to help you out at 513-679-6028. And don't forget to take those canned goods down to the Bengals game today. If you go into the Bengals game, drop them off there outside of the stadium. I'll see you next. Uh, no, Lisa Crawford will be in for the next Sunday morning. So make sure you check her out. I'll be in Hong Kong. Maybe I'll take a video camera and shoot some video to bring back to show you about my trip in Hong Kong. We'll see you later.